You heard what the doctor said. You're risking your life here. What life? Upstairs? No. I can't do it. This is a Hail Mary at best. No, it's, no, it's not. It, it's a gamble. Yeah, I know that. But look, if there was a time to roll the dice, this is it. You just don't know how to give up. No, I do. Trust me, I do. I know exactly how to give up. You know what scares the shit out of me, Kev? Is that it's easy. Easy, 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 I don't care if you're driving. I don't care if the activity that you're doing at the moment requires sight. Close your eyes. I want you to think about the potential keepers you could have selected at the start of the season. Think about those players, those two to three players. If you've got those players in mind, now I want to tell you, that you can only judge your present keeper against those players. You can't compare my keeper to your keeper because they have nothing to do with one another. The Bible tells you not to covet thy neighbor's goods. So don't covet my goods. Keep your eyes off of them. I'm more than sure that Orlando regrets Christian Watson. It's been about three weeks a bye in the middle, less than 20 points, and about 11 catches. I'm more than sure that Andy regrets TJ Hawkinson. Record aside, of course. Oh, at the beginning of the season, Andy posted the picture when TJ Hawkinson got his contract and he just thought that he was going to be at top of the tight end world. But currently, he is number four. And we all know that being the number four ranked tight end really means you're the 30th. Let's be honest, that's how tight ends work. I'm more than certain that Ed regrets Garrett Wilson. And I'm definitely sure that Jay wants nothing to do with Justin Fields next year. But again, if you've got those players in mind, you can only compare your current selection to those players. My potential picks would have either been Rashad White from the Buccaneers, Devonta Smith, or DK Metcalf. At the current moment, DK Metcalf is the 41st ranked wide receiver. 22 catches, 337 yards, two touchdowns, 43 total points. Devonta Smith, 38th ranked wide receiver. 32 catches, 383 yards, two touchdowns as well, and 46 points. But DK Metcalf has also had a bye. And just this week, unfortunately, DK Metcalf was injured. Devonta Smith, however, hasn't had a bye and has played every single game this season. So I want you to remember, 337 yards with DK, minus two weeks, 383 yards, seven weeks played for Devonta Smith. Rashad White, 83 carries, 266 yards, one touchdown. He is currently the 28th ranked running back. So let that sink in while you judge my DK Metcalf selection, which I'm sure most of you did at the beginning of the season, but I don't even have to say I'm sure because I heard some of you vocalize your opinions on it. I think that I made the best possible selection. I already selected Josh Allen with the third pick just like I did in 2022, so technically that was a keeper as well. And I selected DK with the fifth selection. Now, it's not a home run. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that DK Metcalf has been a success. Absolutely not. I wanted him to produce more than this. And at the very least, he isn't my number one wide receiver now that I have Chase. But I want to be clear. Devonta Smith ain't doing shit at the moment. 
Orlando's benching him. And we all know what that means. He's going to score 20 points this week. Oh, oh, oh. This is your week seven recap. Bundy here, you there. I'm a little bit under the weather at the moment, so, you know, bear with me. Let's discuss these week seven scores. And I have to unfortunately tell you what happened to me this week. I have to admit it. I have to come before you and be honest as I always am. The Toronto Bundy loses 83-295 to Big Papa Poop. Ah, uh, this was a rough one. Look, I think it's, it's, it's common practice for everyone to always watch the flex position and your regular slots. Eric this week put Christian McCaffrey in his flex spot because obviously he was injured and it was a Monday night game. Now that's an easy decision. Most people would agree and I think most of us, and when I say most, I reluctantly include Hensel and Joe in that category. Most of us would have put him in the flex position and would have known to put him in the flex position because he's playing in Monday. That's, that's a pretty easy decision. However, when I woke up Sunday morning, I saw the queue next to DK Metcalf's name. And I thought, DK never misses games. I mean, look, I didn't even think about it. I just know that DK Metcalf doesn't miss games. And more often than not, players who start off with queues, they end up playing. They end up being active. But of course, what happened? At about 3 o'clock, the, 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 it was announced that DK was out. So that put me in a fucked up situation because I currently had Michael Pittman in the flex spot. I didn't think about this. Look, I this game was a failure because of poor management. That's what I'm telling you. I managed my team poorly because I didn't take the, the safety precautions to put DK Metcalf into the flex spot because at three o'clock it was announced that he wasn't going to play. So, at the moment, on my bench, I had Joe Mixon on a bye, uh, Dalvin Cook on a bye, Michael Thomas already played on Thursday, Chase on a bye, uh, Justice Hill was already playing, and so was Kareem Hunt. So I was forced to drop Joshua Kelly and insert what I thought was a decent decision. See, you can't even make decent decisions at that point. You just have to put someone in. So I decided to put Kadarius Tony because I thought, look, Patrick Mahomes, he shares the rock with just about everybody. I might get lucky and get a six yard touchdown. Maybe that's what will happen. So I put in Kadarius Tony. It turns out that he ends up getting one fucking point. And of course, Joshua Kelly in the very first quarter bursts for a 49 yard touchdown. This is the thing that's so that makes fantasy such an abusive relationship between you and chance. Joshua Kelly did nothing in the absence of Austin Eckler. But all of a sudden, because he's, <laughs> you know, like Tupac said, you ain't shit without your homeboys. All of a sudden, because he's with his homeboys, because he knows that maybe the defense gives him the benefit of the doubt. You know, because Austin Eckler is currently playing and maybe they've triggered their game plan to stop him. Joshua Kelly just sneaks by and gets a 49 yard touchdown. I was just hoping that he would get tackled, you know, somewhere near the goal line, but it just never happened. And by the end of the game, he ends with a magical number of 13. And Austin Eckler, of course, gets a four. Now, what makes this depressing is this. You can make mistakes like this and it doesn't end up biting you in the ass because mathematically, if it makes no difference, then who gives a fuck? But if I would have put Joshua Kelly in the flex spot, and I'm being completely honest, that's what I would have done. At that point, I just would have thrown him in and hoped to get maybe four points from him and Eckler gets the 13. If I would have put him in the flex spot and not selected Kadarius Tony. this would have been a tie. 
That's right. That's right, Jay. This game was supposed to be a tie, but it wasn't a tie because I fucked up. I let you down. We would have tied had it not been for my, uh, you know, if I would have managed my team properly, we would have tied. Now, what else did my team do? I fortunately got a touchdown from Jalen Warren, and hopefully he gets a bigger role within the Steelers offense. Zay Flowers with a seven, Mark Andrews with a big game with 18 points. Michael Pittman Jr. got a touchdown on a broken play. I actually was going to put Kareem Hunt into the flex spot before Sunday. And it's, you know, it's the same deal as it always is. You know, it's, it's the same shit as last week when someone else had scored and I had Michael Pittman in and, you know, whatever, whatever. So Kareem Hunt scored and then I said, fuck you, Michael Pittman. And then later on, Michael Pittman got that broken play touchdown that I think was about 70 something yards. You know, then I was very gleeful in the chat and then Paul said, fuck you, because because <laughs> Bijan Robinson doesn't have. Look, look, Paul, I don't know what to tell you, Paul. We can all change. We can all change. I once hated Michael Pittman, but minutes later, I love Michael Pittman. I grew, Paul. I evolved. I hope you evolve with me. We'll get to Paul's performance in just a bit. On the other side for Jay, you had Jordan Love with four, you know, 15 points, Alvin Kamara, 17, whatever. Jay didn't do anything. I should have tied with you, Jay. You know, what are we going to do? You know? what are we gonna do of course Kyle Pitts gets four points when you throw him in there I think he got what did he get I think he got like 80 yards two weeks ago let's see uh two weeks ago he got seven catches 87 yards the next week he only got 43 yards but he got a touchdown right so eight points 10 points and now he gets a four when you put him in <laughs> I always feel like players who do that they're just they're similar to the WB frog right we're all old we remember the WB frog he was you know, he was very talkative in private. He would say all this shit. He would sing. But then when you present him to others, he does nothing. So he makes you look insane. That's a WB frog. That's what Kyle Pitts is. Of course, 17 points from Jonathan Taylor on the bench. See, when you consider things like that, you you you, you kind of... Um, that, that certainly puts you at peace when your opponent could say the same. If your opponent comes in and says, well, I could have done this, and then the score would have been different because he obviously could have put in Jonathan Taylor, you know, he could have replaced Brian Robinson, or he could have thrown, thrown him in there for Romeo Dobbs. I'm pretty sure had he put him in, you know, it would have been either of those two. He wasn't going to take Alvin Kamara out. So I have no idea how close Jay was to playing Jonathan Taylor, but that's the case. Team Bundy loses when it should have been a tie and also 22 points from dustin hopkins his kicker your kicker scores over 20 points more often than not you are going to be the victor and of course i want to mention zero points from calvin ridley i love that i i love that because jay always he seems to me to be the the, the type you know two three weeks maybe even months before the season he's really paying attention to those sleepers to the guys that no one's paying attention to and jay always thinks he's slick that's why he's always picking up everyone's garbage on the waiver wire i saw what you did jay i saw what you did this week you motherfucker Acknowledge Me defeats Joelicus Maximus, 105-284. Ed stopping the Joe hype train. <laughs> Ed putting it to a stop. 11 points from Brock Purdy. 17 from Jameer Gibbs. Finally getting the production out of Jameer Gibbs that he thought he would have gotten at the beginning of the season. Getting his very first double-digit performance. One touchdown. Look at that. Uh, of course, Dante Foreman with, I mean, that was pretty much what won the week for Ed. 29 points for Dante Foreman, three touchdowns. I think he got one through the air, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he got 89 yards, 16 carries, two touchdowns on the ground, and one in the air. Great performance for him. Uh, let's see. Uh, George Pickens with 10 points, 14 for Mike Evans. Look at that. You can feel happy about the trade now, Ed. Mike Evans did something. I want to say it, it's kind of poetic that the very last play in the Monday night game was an interception by Brock Purdy, which 
at the moment, Ed had 107 points, and that dropped him back to 105 points, giving the commish the Kirk Cameron Award for fantasy. <laughs> so even when Ed has a victory and you thought he was going to shine and be at top of the mountain, just reality just takes him down two notches, and he gets 105 points. But of course, you know, who gives a shit? Because a victory is a victory, especially when you score over 100 points. For Joe, he got 21 points from Kirk Cousins on Monday, 19 points again from Travis Etienne, who's the comeback player of the year. He's he's just the steal of the year. When did Joe get him? Well, Joe got him in the second round, so I, that's not necessarily a steal. Joe can't even pick him up as a, ste as a sleeper next year, so that's unfortunate for Joe. Of course, if any of you are considering picking up Travis Etienne, this is his josh jacobs year so he will do nothing for you the very next season as he did nothing for me in the past rashad white who we mentioned earlier with just nine points five points from dj moore uh let's see uh nothing else to speak of here joe loses uh they're both tied with a record of two and five let's move on to the next game jokes on you continues to go on his impressive run losing to Highlander the Trilogy 98-256. As I predicted, this would be the case. Andy would go on with a record of 6-0-1. Why did this happen to Pedro? It happened to Pedro because of the same reason that this will continue to happen to Pedro, because he continues to hold on to the Raiders' offense, getting three points from Josh Jacobs and five points from Devonta Adams. Sorry, Devontae Adams. Let's take a look real quick because this reminds me of the uh, the trade talk that we had on the uh, on the chat here. So, as as most of you, you know, some of you will recall Andy at some point during the week. I think earlier in the Sunday, uh, Andy had mentioned that Pedro sent him an offer. He said that it was odd that Pedro sent him the offer because they faced each other that week. Uh, Andy at first didn't want to disclose the information because he's a bitch. I don't see. I don't understand this about Andy has so many rules for somebody that's like, oh, I'm about hate. Andy, let me reiterate what I said. You, f hate doesn't feed you. All right. Hate is your ethos, Andy. But hate isn't what you do. You believe in hate. But hate isn't what you do. You can't hate quite the way that I do, Andy. I have no rules. If somebody sends me a trade offer and I would like to out them, I will do that. I don't have these rules about, no, I'm not going to do that because of that. And Andy sent me that cringy ass uh, voice note where he said he doesn't listen to what I am like I'm his stepdad or something and he's rebelling against me. Hate is your ethos, friend. It's not what you do, right? You don't practice what you preach. You just believe it. So Andy later on posts the 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 trades well Pedro actually sent them two trades so the first offer uh Andy would have potentially have gotten Josh Jacobs and Cole Komet uh for Puka Nakua and Aaron Jones and the second trade was much more ambitious it was Josh Jacobs Damian Pierce Josh Reynolds in exchange for Puka Nakua Aaron Jones and Chuba Herbert uh, I think it's interesting because I don't believe that Andy, right, w the first one was sent at, the first one was sent at 4.28 a.m. And then the other one was sent at 7.19. Um, okay, on the, tw let's see. When's the, tw God, 10, this is such a detour, guys. I, I apologize. Uh, let's see, on the 20th, the 20th was Friday. So Pedro sent the first offer on Friday and said, you know what? I'll do you one better, Andy. I'll add more players. Here's what I have to say about this trade. And of course, Eric posted the trades that Pedro sent to him. And I thought those tra that trade offer was actually reasonable. But here's the advice that I have for Pedro. And I can only consider this advice because I made a successful trade earlier this year. Your trades are too ambitious. They're too, they're too intimidating. You know, it's too much. Uh, less is more. I believe if you would have offered someone Josh Jacobs one for one, you probably would have dumped him off. I commend you for trying to get him off of your team. 
Um, and I would, st- I, even saying that, I would still take Josh Jacobs. Pedro, if you're listening to this, I would take Josh Jacobs. Just make me a reasonable offer. You know, don't offer me Mark, An- don't, don't, don't say Mark Andrews for Josh Jacobs because I'm not going to do it. You know, Mark Andrews right now is looking, looking like, you know, the, my very first candidate for keeper of 2024. So why the fuck am I going to give him up? I don't even know why, I'm being, why am I being so defensive about Mark Andrews? I'm protecting him for some reason. But yeah, I mean, um, it, that's real shit. That's that's one of the components that goes into trading now that hinders us so much more than it did in the past. The keepers will stop trading. You know, it's it, it's going to stop trading like nothing before because of what I just said. Why would I trade Mark Andrews for a disappointment of uh, of, of Josh Jacobs or even consider this why would I trade and I'm just using Mark Andrews as an example because I selected him in the sixth round why would I select Mark Andrews why would I trade Mark Andrews for Devonta Adams because Devonte Adams is a great player and he could yield some benefit for me later on in the season but then I can't select him as a keeper because Pedro selected him with what his first or second selection So I can't even keep him for next season. So I'm really going to hold on to Andrews, somebody who's producing this year and will produce the next. You know, and it's even funny because the tight end position is a position that won't even exist next season. And, you know, I'm actively going to be using him. So that's going to, you know, that's the con, I guess, to the keepers. Um, We will hoard players because we can use them in the future if we selected them after the third round. Does that mean that we'll be more willing to trade marquee first and second selections? I guess so. But I guess if that were the case, we would be making those trades. And it's not happening. So, as I said, Pedro should do a little bit less. I think it's a bit intimidating for someone like Andy, who doesn't trade, and you make a four-player trade and you somehow think that you're going to do a better job of convincing him by converting it to a six-player trade. It doesn't work that way. Um, You know, in many ways, uh, governments are able to control citizens because they take their freedoms very, very slowly. That's the only way you're going to convince anyone to willingly take a vaccine or willingly give up their freedom in exchange for safety. You have to do it very, very slowly. And in this league, trading is kind of that way. It's, we, we, we look at trading like we're giving up something that's so valuable to us. So you have to do a really good job at doing the most minimal transaction. And that's the only way that you're going to convince somebody like Andy that... You know, it's a good idea for him to trade, I don't know, Aaron Jones. I think Aaron Jones is a realistic person for Andy to shift around. You know, I think so. So just think of it in that sense. You got to do a lot of little steps in order to overcome somebody and force them to make a trade. Less is more. Of course, I say that not to, uh, you know, discourage anybody who took the vaccine, whatever, that's your business. I just, you know, that's how my mind works. My mind works in analogies. So, you know, deal with it. Uh, But anyway, let's get back to the scores. Uh, The scores here, uh, Pedro, of course, getting 10 points from Kenneth Walker. The third, five points from Devontae Adams. Jalen Waddle has been another disappointing keeper. I believe Pedro selected him as his keeper. At the moment, he seems to be injured. But he hasn't gotten over 100 yards at any point during the season. He got 86 yards in the second week. 11 points was his high from week six. He hasn't turned out quite how Pedro expected him to turn out. And of course, now with the injury to Jerome Ford, rubbing my hands like Birdman, the injury to Jerome Ford will fuck Pedro up more than ever because he has James Conner on IR. He's got Joe Burrow who has this lingering calf injury. Everything is looking awful for Pedro. And I also want to add that earlier in the week, Pedro picks up Julio Jones and then drops Julio Jones. I thought that was worth mentioning. Let's see, October 25th, Pedro. 
<laughs> October 22nd, Pedro added Julio Jones. Is that the day when uh, that became the news? No, no, no. He did that on Sunday, right? This Sunday, he picked up Julio Jones. And I guess he was holding on to him to see, oh, let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. And he drops him uh, just this morning, October 25th. So Julio Jones, he is he's going to be a journeyman this year in the fantasy league. Uh, but let's get to Andy's scores. 32 points from Patrick Mahomes. I think that's his high for the year. Aaron Jones does nothing as he's probably recovering from his injury. Uh, Javante, well, Javante Williams with 9 points. 14 points for Hill. And Puka Nakua, who is, you know, that's credit to Andy. That's that's one of the, the strongest moves this season uh, as far as waiver pickups. Andy picked up Puka Nakua September 13th he hasn't let go since and Puka Nakua has been a bright spot sort of um you know playing as a, a strong number two to Cooper Cup eight points from TJ Hawkinson who fucking sucks in tight end world uh five disappointing points from Keenan Allen but who cares Andy moves on uh to a record of six and O oh and one Ewok rape loses to Ricky O, 78 to 106. Eric with a disappointing performance from the Bills defense. The Bills defense has been weak over the past few weeks. Let's see. Uh, yeah, you know, after, you know, coming out of the gate with a disappointing four against the Jets, they got 10, 32, 8, 8, 7. Eh, all right, you know, they haven't been that disappointing. I guess they've been standard. Uh, they just had a bad week against the Patriots. Uh, Amari Cooper with two points. You know, I've mentioned that uh, Amari Cooper, you know, I'm interested in him, but, you know, he kind of, you know, he's putting together these these trash weeks. I don't, th I don't think I'm too interested in, in him anymore. Um, Isaiah Pacheco with 11 points. Cooper Cup with a four. Of course, if Puka Nakua shows up, then that means Cooper Cup won't. Matthew Stafford isn't that talented. 20 points on the bench from Gus Edwards. Eric, of course, regretting uh, putting in uh, Ramondre Stevenson for this reason. But, you know, uh, God, Edwards and Hill, you never know what these guys are going to do. This is uh, Edwards' first good performance of the year because uh, he hasn't done shit prior. Uh, what else happened here? 19 points from Christian McCaffrey after he fumbled in the very first quarter at the goal line he scores 19 points of course only cmc could do something like that on the other side 33 points from lamar jackson see lamar jackson has 33 points right he does all this he's still fourth right josh allen is still number one orlando just in case you wanted to know josh allen still number one 15 points from saquon barkley seven points from deandre uh, uh deandre swift uh, two disappointing points from Christian Watson, who will probably be riding the bench for or Orlando soon. And look at this 15 point performance from Darren Waller. Seven catches, 98 yards. Look at that. And another bright spot for Orlando. He had 13 points from the Browns defense. Of course, the 24 points that Jordan Addison scored on his bench. Orlando leaving a lot of points on the bench. He is sure to get that goofy riding the pine award that the Real Deal podcast uh, awards people with for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So, so Orlando kind of, you know, he returns the favor uh, from that very manipulative night when Eric uh, put a Mickey in Orlando's drink and took him to the Run the Jewels concert. Uh, giving Orlando a losing record over the past few weeks, but or Orlando returns the favor back to Ewok Rape. And the very last game of Week 7, Plathanos defeats Porkchop Express 85-72. to Hensel just will not go away. But I will say this. Paul lost this game. Hensel didn't win. Paul lost this game. And I don't say this because, you know, I give credit when credit is due. I hope everyone understands me when I say that. I give credit when credit is due, even though I'm a fucking hater and I want the worst for your team. Hensel was supposed to lose this game. Why do I say that? Bijan Robinson had, you know, what's been reported as a headache. 
sorry, I got a runny nose, what's been reported as a headache that he got before the game. But interestingly enough, that wasn't reported to anyone. Uh, when I listened to the Fantasy Focus podcast, they said that ESPN wasn't even alerted of it either. So that's fucked up, man. That's fucked up. The Atlanta Falcons said nothing. Like, he has a headache and you didn't think that this was <laughs> worth mentioning to anyone B. John robinson apparently showed up later on in the game late in the game i think he carried the ball. how many carries did he have let's see let's see let's see he had one carry for three yards and maybe that was late in the game zero points for him four points from raheem mostard and negative five points from the lions defense like so many things went wrong for Paul. And, 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 let's also say this. Justin Herbert, for the very first time, scores just a, His lowest score was the week before with 18. Now he scored 10 this week against the Kansas City Chiefs. So a lot of low points for Paul. I only say that Paul should have won the game because with some teams, you know the flow of some players you just have to assume that in any normal week, there would have been at least 15 extra points on Paul's team. Let's be generous and say that. There would have at least been 15 more points on Paul's team. And Paul just didn't get that. So Hensel gets the victory. 17 points from Trevor Lawrence. 12 from Najee Harris. I don't know how he managed to do that. And Rasheed Rice is, is a bright spot for Hensel. Of course, not getting crazy production, but it looks like he's becoming Patrick Mahomes' favorite receiver outside of Travis Kelsey. 12 points for him. Dallas Goddard with 13 points. And Drake London finally coming back down to earth with 5 points. And I only say that because Drake London scored 12 last week. So, you know, that's a big deal for Drake London. But Hensel gets the victory nonetheless. 4 victories for Hensel so far look at that Hensel going against team Bundy's wishes how dare you so let's move on to the standings at top of the WCW division Highlander trilogy at 6-0-1 Ricky O at 4-3 Big Papa Poop at 4-3 Pork Chop Express at 3-4 Joelicus Maximus at the bottom with two and five. Over to the NWO, we have Ewok Rape with four, two, and one. Plathanos, four, two, and one. The Toronto Bundy, two, four, and one. Acknowledge me at two and five. And jokes on you, losing his fourth game in a row at two and five as well. The top scores in the league are as follows Ewok Rape with 719. Highlander Trilogy with 702. See, at the moment, you would have been the number one ranked, or at least you would have had the most points in the league, Andy, had you not have done your stupid little strategy of putting players on the bench because Hawkinson got like 18, so you would have had more points than Eric. Highlander Trilogy, second with 702. 680, Pork Chop Express, that's a surprise, in the third slot. Uh, Ricky O with 462 in the fourth slot and Joelicus Maximus with 632 and also we, we'd like to mention the sixth the sixth team with the most points is Team Bundy right behind Joe with 626 it's worth mentioning you know it's it's you know it's relevant to me so what do we have this week for week 12? Looky what we have here. Andy, two can play at this game. If you'll notice, my players are benched too. We can both do this. I can copy your ritual because it's a ritual. That little thing that you do, it's a ritual. I'm not saying it's evil or it's satanic. But it's definitely something that you do because you think it brings you some sort of luck. Is Andy superstitious? Well, what if I do the same thing too? Andy, I'm not just saying this, but I think this is the week where you lose. I think this is the week, and I think everyone feels the same way. I think I can, you know, look, look, uh, I, I can look at everyone else's reactions. I can feel how everyone else feels. And I think this is your week to get got. 
not afraid of your matchups. Your matchups put no fear in my heart. Of course, Patrick Mahomes puts no fear into my heart as I have the number one ranked quarterback and you have the number three ranked quarterback. Don't forget those little 32 points that he scored this week. That, 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 was, that was the first time he hit over 30, okay? Josh Allen did that weeks ago. I like my matchups, Andy. I like the way this week's looking for me. I won't necessarily say that I guarantee a victory because, you know, what? Well, yeah, fuck it. I guarantee a victory this week, Andy. How about that? I guarantee that I will defeat you this week. How do you feel about that? It's just how the mathematics is mathing at the moment, Andy. I just, I look at your projections. I assume the players that you're going to throw in there. And I, and I, <coughs> excuse me. I'm like all sick while I'm talking shit. And I now have the benefit of Kareem Hunt getting the load of the carries at least for this week and the very next week with the Browns. So I have another running back one. I have another RB1 along with Joe Mixon who, yeah, he's not doing much at the moment, but now I can load Kareem Hunt in there and who knows what he's going to do, Andy? What do you have? What running backs do you have? Besides Aaron Jones, who got five points this week. Hmm? Big Papa Poop going up against Acknowledge Me. Acknowledge Me looks to have the, the matchup advantages as far as ESPN is concerned. Ricky O facing Jokes on You. Is this going to be Jokes on You fifth, fifth straight loss? Will Pedro lose five straight? <clears throat> Let's look at the matchups here for Pedro. I don't know, man. I mean, <clears throat> Orlando's team is unpredictable. You know, I think Orlando uh, acknowledges that his team sometimes just, just doesn't show up. Uh, I see here that he just dumped off his um, his kicker, Moody, who, who's been missing a few field goals. Uh, he picked up Brandon Aubrey, who is currently ranked as the sixth ranked kicker. What do you have if you're Pedro? I don't know. Pedro looks like he's going to play Josh Downs, who uh, who got a touchdown. He had 18 points, 125 yards. Is he the number one wide receiver in Indianapolis? I would, you know, I'd hope he, he isn't. I hope not. I don't know. This is kind of just, you know, 50-50. I wouldn't be surprised if Pedro lost, and I wouldn't be surprised if Orlando lost. Porkchop Express facing Ewok Rape. Both projected with some uh, high scores, 102 for, for Pork Chop Express and 104 for Ewok Rape. And the final game of the week is Joelicus Maximus facing Plathanos. Will Hensel move on to five wins? I fucking hope he doesn't. I fucking hope he doesn't. I want to analogize Hensel before we go. Like, Hensel to me is you know Hensel to me is like someone who you know they're running say a, a, a 10 mile race he's he's jumping out of the gate faster than he should right the first five miles maybe he's running at a pace of like 8 30 you know eight minutes and 30 seconds per mile and what he should really be running is about like an a 9 15 very soon, I think you're going to see some negative splits on Hensel's mileage. I think you're going to see that he's going to slow down as the race progresses. That's my opinion. And if it's not my opinion, then it's just my wish, right? So, as always, may your quarterbacks get hurt before they leave the locker room. May your running backs pull their hamstrings. And may your wide receivers... Get arrested for marijuana possession. Andy, this is the week. This is it. This is it, Andy. You're done. You're done. Go fuck yourselves. <laughs>